Railroad spikes. I'm gonna forge two railroad spikes. Eat them up different. I'm gonna do a pineapple twist on this one and a Rubik twist on this one. And then probably forge skulls on the ends. If you have, this is an empty old bottle. Railroad spike bottle opener. Put it on here, pop the top off. It's a cool novelty piece. And it works. Totally functional awesome. So, without further ado,
It's got the crazy X eyes skull. Pineapple twist. It's just kind of like the creepy, creepy thin skull. Get him up on the wire wheel. Make him shine. Pineapple twist. Put a little crazy skull on the end. Um, what I was really doing is I made a a die on the press to help save time when putting those chisel lines. And I wanted to try that out, and it works pretty pretty good. It beats. It saves so much time when you put the rear spike on. You have to put those lines on all four sides, even for the even on the Rubik's. You have to put those chisel lines in there. And what I've been using is just a chisel with a hammer. It's only about an inch wide and hammering that down. And that usually kills the heat. And then you got to heat it up again and do all four sides. So it takes at least four heats, one, you know, one heat per side where the, where the press, you can actually heat this up, hold it with the tongs and just press in a line, a full line and then rotate it, press it in. And you can get all four lines chiseled in to a railroad spike in one heat. That's huge. That's, it's like a huge time saver. Um, and with the pineapple twist, you have to do that twice. You have to chisel the lines, then f twist it, and then flatten it, and then re-chisel the lines, and then back twist it. So that's a lot of chiseling. You know, that's like eight, eight, that would be eight normal heats for me anyway. Um, so I narrowed that, those eight heats in one pineapple twist to two for the chisel lines, at least. Um, so that's just a huge g game changer with the hydraulic press and just building your own the like hydraulic dies to fit the needs of whatever projects you're working on. So that's the uh, the pineapple twist with the skull. And then the other one, is, it's got like X's on his eyes, X'd out. Um, the Rubik, which the Rubik is little cubes, which you put on the twist. And how you do that is you, you saw me get the grinder. You, you put all four chisel lines in the railroad spike and then only diagonal corners, only two sides. Like one side, you, you, would, you would grind in those cuts, and then on the opposite corner side, you grind in those cuts, and then just give it a 360 twist, and all those little cubes will pop out. And then you have like the other, the lines that you didn't cut is kind of like that, that spiral in between the cubes. I always like the Rubik twist, it's pretty cool. Much easier to do than the pineapple twist. The pineapple twist, Looks, I think, equally as cool, but it's a lot more, a lot more heats and twists and, and chiseling to do with that. But uh, yeah, just two novelty uh, bottle openers. It's an empty, but they work. They work well. They get the right size. And then uh, the Rubik twist one. Put it on there. Boom. So it pops them. I'm not doing any product placement here, but uh, that's it. They are done. Uh, I don't know what projects I'll be working on next. Um, I got commissioned to make a, uh, a Viking battle axe. I've been making a lot of those out of a RAS file and 1084 bit. Um, I still have to, this has already been heat treated. I just have to uh, 
clean this up and then fit it to the handle and then do some carvings and stuff on there. Um, but it's my interpretation of the, the bearded axe from the Vikings. So I got this going on. Um, just a lot of miscellaneous projects I got. bags of quick -crete, concrete behind me here um, from doing the outdoor where you saw me forging you know I concreted one pillar in just so the wind wouldn't take it over but I got some extra bags and it's, it's got me thinking about the floor in here is all stone and I kind of it's not going to be perfect you know it's not going to be level and perfectly you know perfect I got a lot of stuff in there I have to move but if I could just lay some concrete down I did a little bit over here by the coal forge and it, it, it helps your feet when you're standing a long time. You'd be surprised at how much more comfortable any kind of a flat surface is than the uneven rock surface. And just, if I, I think if I was to just concrete, even though it won't be perfect, but get a nice kind of somewhat flat ground in the shop, it's a lot of work. It's going to be a lot more than two bags of concrete, too. Um, but the hydraulic press has wheels on it. I'd be able to wheel that around the shop, move it in, in different spots. The anvil is on a stump, but I would gladly tip this over and install some dolly wheels on it to be able to just rotate it you know if I have a bigger project in here I could just roll it over to the corner of the wall or something like that and, and have an opener space it's just options it's just it's, it's huge so a lot of work you know concrete in the floor but uh maybe I'll do a time lapse on that probably not though because it's not <laughs> it's not gonna be fun to do but I'll probably have some footage of it um like I said the bearded axe um Another thing I have is a friend of mine dropped off a bunch of turkey feathers, which I use those just for, for looks on, I attach one to the tomahawks, so I might be forging up some tomahawks, and he found some femur bones, not human, femur bones in the woods, like leg bones, probably to a deer, maybe a cow, but I'm thinking deer, like a big deer. Um, you know, they're not too huge, but I, I've always wanted to, and I haven't done this before, so I want to try it. I always wanted to make like a samurai sword, or just a sword where the ha the whole handle is a femur bone. So it's like the long bone part, and then like the knuckle bone parts on the on the pummel, and then just the blade comes up. All right, stay safe out there.